Hi, I'm Mike Sintolo, Chief Analyst of Cabot Growth Investor and Cabot Top 10 Trader. I'm here with your Cabot Weekly Review recording this uh, mid-morning on Friday, November 8th. So a week ago, we had seen a little bit small degradation in the evidence, you know, still much more good than bad. But the intermediate term trend of the major indexes, which had been positive but not powerful, you know, they were kind of neutral. We saw some dents among, you know, during earnings season among some leading stocks here and there. Obviously, this week we've had a ton of news, the Fed, the election, a million earnings reports, it seems like. Um, and the news isn't as important to me as the reaction. The reaction has been very positive. So the major indexes, as well as a lot of growth funds and growth measures that I look at, kind of breaking out on the upside. And while there have been, again, some air pockets, some potholes on er in, during earnings season, you're going to get those. Um, there's been a lot of names that have just really skyrocketed and almost uh, euphoric moves to the upside. Now, I mean, near term and depending what you own, I, I think it's important to keep your feet on the ground. I mean, you know, we all invest to make money. It's been a good week, <laughs> to say the least. So don't get me wrong. You want to enjoy it. You know, a couple of high fives is fine. But make sure you keep your feet on the ground. Use the weekend to, you know, take a look at your portfolio, what you own, what you, you know, want to buy more of, maybe take some partial profits. And on the buy side, you know, work to get some decent entry points as opposed to just chasing stuff higher, that sort of thing. Overall, though, you know my motto, I'm a trend follower, up is good. Okay. And I mean, the vast majority of evidence has been positive for a while, but even more so now this week with a lot more, even more than the already large amount of leadership we had before this week. Now we're starting to see even cyclical stocks and things like that kick into gear. And Cabot Growth Investors Model Portfolio, we took partial profits in one name that we had a huge position in, which kind of boosted the cash position, put a little bit of money to work. We're still about 18% in cash. Honestly, we have two or three small positions. If we bought more of that would kind of take up that cash. So we'll see how it goes. My guess is we'll be doing more buying here in the days ahead. Um, but for now, 18%. And like I said, kind of managing our portfolio in terms of what to take partial profits in and where to focus sort of new buying as well. Okay, let's hop into the charts. As usual, I'm using a program called Market Surge. It's a product of Investors Business Daily. You can learn more at marketsurge.com. Um, let me get my pen out. Starting with the major indexes. And, you know, we had been talking about, I had been talking about positive, not powerful. So here's like the NASDAQ. It's been above its moving averages here, trending higher, but it's kind of had trouble getting above this prior high. I'm not a big breakout guy. I've said this a million times with the indexes because they're very widely followed. But with that said, when you kind of have a few of them that look similar like we have with the NASDAQ and you have, here's the IWM, which is small caps, right? And you have the MDY, which is uh, mid caps. Same sort of pattern, different, but similar pattern, meaning couldn't really get out to new highs yet was, you know, holding above the 50 day line, that sort of thing. And now they're all breaking out on the upside. I mean, it's bullish, up is good. Now, I mean, just to run through some scenarios, if we come in next week and something goes wrong in the world, and, you know, I'm just using this and this is the MDY, but say this comes all the way back in to the 50 day line, you know, gives up the entire move. Yeah, that would probably be a very least short term kind of abnormal. But I mean, you know me, I always go with kind of what's in front of me. And right now it looks pretty good. Same thing with the other, you know, this is the S&P 500. This had been stronger, obviously, out to new highs, but held the 50 day line, you know, racing higher. And the New York Composites, the fifth major index, Got a little dicey here, a little bit below the 50 day line, but not a huge breach or anything and ratcheting back up. So the intermediate term trend is clearly back positive from kind of neutral and just sort of the breakout factor. Again, I'm not a big breakout player on the indexes, um, but in this case, I kind of am. <laughs> so I kind of think it, it looks it looks pretty good on that side. Um, moreover, when you look at a lot of these growth measures, um, this is the IBD 50 index, which is basically an index, you know, good relative strength, good earnings growth, kind of the pond of stocks that I fish in. Um, I'm not a cup with handle guy, but, you know, it's kind of a base breakout sort of thing. The IBD mutual fund index, this is an index of real money mutual funds. This thick blue line, you can see it's kind of coming out to new highs here above its summer highs. And even things like the um, equal weight NASDAQ 100, right, which um, it's hard to see on the daily chart. Maybe let me blow up the weekly chart for you. Um, yeah, it's a little bit here. So kind of like the 90 to like 92 level or whatever had just been constant resistance going back to March. And now you can just see, you know, back to the daily chart, kind of a quote breakout on the upside. So again, you know, if this just fails, if this was two days and then people are worried about growth or something happens overseas or whatever, well, you know, that would probably be a negative. But here it clearly looks much more like the uncertainty is lifted and the institutions are you know, are buying stocks. OK, um, you know, the XLP, too, this is consumer staples. Always talk about this. 
it's just been trending lower. I mean, I'm not saying it can't rally here. And yes, there's post-election movement with the dollar and it, got, it was super strong, then it was weak the next day, so on and so forth. But either way, it's clearly underperforming most things, but I mean, especially growth-oriented measures like we're talking about that are breaking out up here. And this is still sort of living by its lows, okay? Um, the only real thing, a couple of things I wanted to say, not that they're flies in the ointment, but so we'll see what happens. This is obviously the post-election volatility is going to last a few days. This is the 10-year note yield. Um, and 40. Th this would be 45, which is 4.5%. It's kind of just, I would call it round number resistance on the upside. And sure enough, we've been selling off here in terms of um, rates have been coming down is a better way to put that. So I think that, you know, as long as we can hang in here, maybe the decline would be great. But as long as the rates don't surge from here, I think if we start to kite higher, I'm not going to say four and a half is like a magic number. But if we just kite higher week after week from here, at some point it's going to matter and it could be it could be sooner rather than later. So far, though, so good with the sort of post-election sell-off in rates, okay? I did want to mention a couple of things. One thing I'm seeing here, I mentioned there's been some stocks that have gone wild on the upside. I'm recording this at, right now it's about 11 in the morning. So it's Doximity. This is DOCS. Today it's up 35% as I record this. So this is what I mean where I'm just saying, I mean, hopefully you own some of these, but you want to sort of manage your portfolio and then, you know, look for things to buy. We'll talk about managing right now where on one hand, the stock is clearly extended above its moving average. So clearly it's, let me just tell you, it's boop. Well, I can't get it on this, but it's clearly extended above its moving averages. And, you know, it's been running here for the, the original breakout here. As I get this back to normal, is been about 14 weeks. Okay, so from this point right here, to this point, it's been 14 weeks. So intermediate term wise, it's extended to the upside price wise. And I would say you're getting extended time wise. I mean, there's no limit. It's not like it can't go 18 weeks or 20 weeks, but it's not five weeks or six weeks or eight weeks. So intermediate term, some of these things look a little bit hot and heavy. Doesn't mean it can't go up. Maybe it goes up for two more weeks, then comes in, that sort of thing. At the same time, longer term, again, when looking at the weekly chart, it just got, this is Doximity, it just got going 14 weeks ago from this whole mess back here. So what, I, what I'm trying to say with this chart is you're seeing a lot of stocks that to me are intermediate term, not a good buy point, maybe extended, could pull in, whatever. But longer term are maybe, you know, maybe they're more extended than um, time-wise than Doximity, but it's not like they're in the ninth inning either, okay? So... Like I said, up is good. I'm not trying to be a you know Debbie Downer or anything like that, but I think in the near term you can kind of expect some of these to you know maybe go higher, but then come down, and there'll be some downgrades on valuation and that sort of thing. Um, but interme uh, intermediate term, I should say, but longer term, a lot of these look like they're in the early, maybe mid, sometimes later, but usually mid innings of their overall advances. Okay. Okay. Enough of the sort of chit chat. Let's get to stocks that look pretty good. It's not the easiest thing to find stocks that look viable right here, but there's some out there, I think. Um, this is Taiwan Semiconductor. So chip stocks still aren't, I wouldn't say chip stocks are the leader right now. Okay, now this is the SMH just to kind of switch it up on you. But it's it's a decent little structure in here, like it's kind of nice and tight consolidation, which I think is needed after big run up, obviously big correction, some sloppy action here in recent weeks. Um, so chip stocks we'll see, but Taiwan Semi looks pretty good. It already has earnings, reacted pretty well to them. It did pull in, but just to this, the green line here is the 25-day simple moving average. And now it's kind of popping back up again. I'm not saying it's going to race higher by 50 points on, um, you know, next week, but I think it looks like a pretty decent entry point. Um, Netflix is another one that gapped. Um, of course, this is a mega cap stock, but NFLX um, gapped up here and just, you know, it, it didn't follow through, which was not the best thing, but it certainly didn't do anything wrong. Just very, very tight in here. And now it's starting to stretch its legs to the upside. Could easily pull back. I'm not telling you to go buy it right here, but looks pretty good. Um, Precept, I think it's Procept, Procept Biorobotics, P, which is a mouthful. PRCT, okay. Um, this one's a smaller cap name or mid cap anyway, smaller cap, 5 billion market cap. Um, what I like about this is it had this big, um, it's probably easy to see on the monthly chart. It kind of had this big IPO base for a couple of years, basically. Broke out. Had a nice run for a couple of weeks, but then the market got choppy in the spring for growth stocks. Then you had the summer correction. Then you had, you know, so on and so forth. So it did go up, you know, went down, it went up, it went down. But net net, it really didn't do anything for about, I think it was about five months in there. And now it's gapped up here on gigantic 
I think it was its heaviest ever weekly volume or whatever. Okay. And now the stock is hanging out near its highs. There is, you know, 100 round number resistance, but I like how it's kind of been digesting this move and looks pretty solid, okay? And last, you know, at least on the breakout front, this is Bitcoin, this is IBIT. You could look at maybe GBTC is probably a better chart here to look at. Um, but we are getting the breakout here. Again, we'll see how it goes, but you did have the, you had a nice setup here for many months, kind of three waves down, elections out of the way, breaking out to new highs. And there's obviously a lot of plays on the Bitcoin ecosystem here in terms of individual stocks, but IBIT or GBTC or whatever all look good, okay? Um, I will say cyclical stocks, I'm not going to talk a mil about a million of them here, but they look pretty good. Alco is getting hit today. This is AA, but it looks like it kind of broke out earlier this week on very good volume, not a lot of volume on the sell-off. You have stuff like Vulcan Materials, which um, this is construction aggregates. I know it's not exciting, but you know, kind of, kind of like Bitcoin, it kind of had this long multi-month, three waves down consolidation, um, and then breaking out on the upside and holding the gains here, not just like a one-day wonder after the election, right? Um, and even stuff like this is full disclosure. We got knocked out of this because my the stop was too tight. But this is United Rentals. We got knocked out of this in top ten, um, but it looks pretty good. I mean, this it is what it is. Came into the 50-day line, but then I just have to see this huge volume really the heaviest volume going back until January on the election and so far holding its gains. But there, my point is that there are more cyclical stocks that look pretty good and do look like relatively early stage. So we'll keep an eye on that. Um, I still like sort of the uh, second wave of networkers. This is coherent. It was actually volatile yesterday. This is COHR. Um, again, it just broke out here in, I want to say that was September. Had a few weeks up, pulled back to the 10-week line, and then now it's kind of resuming here after earnings. Um, interestingly, just to mention it, so this is Arista Networks, which has been, you know, it's obviously one of the big dogs in the group networking and all that. And the theory here is that some of the money for chip stocks might flow into other areas. But Arista looks pretty good, but it is getting hit on earnings. It's not broken. It's down to the 25-day line. It looks okay. But I am starting to see, even before today, just Arista and some of these older ones look a little tired and some of these sort of fresher names look fresher. They look better, like a coherent. So that's just something to keep an eye on. Um, Insulet, P-O-D-D, -D, this is in diabetes. Again, I'm recording this, you know, late in the morning, mid-morning, so we'll see how it closes, but looks like a nice kind of an earnings-related breakout here from a very nice and tight area there. I did want to mention Reddit. Um, this is another one that I could have mentioned with um, Doximity. You know, short short term, it's very extended. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's no doubt about it. It had a monster earning gap last week, and then it's followed through this week and all that. So it's not something I personally would be chasing. With that said, it's also not something that's, you know, it basically just kind of came out of this huge IPO structure a few weeks ago. So it should be earlier stage sort of in the bigger picture. So it's a name I'm keeping my eye on. It's on the back burner just because it's, you know, I want it to settle down, but looks pretty good. Um, and then just a couple other names. Um, this is Fresh Pet, which has been sort of a three steps forward, two, two steps back stock. You can kind of see how it's kind of chilled out here, but did react well to earnings. I think this was Monday morning, actually. And it's it hasn't followed through, you know, hugely, but looks very good. Again, this thing tends to stretch its legs and then kind of pull back. But a great story, great growth trends, looks pretty good. Um, and then last but not least, probably should have put this in the um, cyclical folder here, was XPO. So some of the truckers have looked pretty good. XPO is, to be fair, had a huge run last year. The group did when one of the peers went bankrupt. But again, you just see a lot of stocks here. Even though the indexes did well in the summer, not a lot of stocks did. It was really a big mega cap affair. So you just have a lot of these names that have spent really six months or so, depends on which stock, six, seven months, consolidating, not really doing anything wrong from a longer term perspective. And now resuming, this is three weeks in a row of above average volume, kind of a weekly volume cluster, if you will, as I call it, on XPO and holding near its highs after the election. So overall, listen, the stuff is good. There, there's, there's a lot of stock. A lot of leading stocks look good. They have for a while, and now we're seeing sort of an acceleration in some of them. I do think it's a little hot and heavy with some names. I'm not saying they're going to top out. I hope they don't. We own a decent amount of them. So I'm not saying that, but I, I do think you want to keep your feet on the ground. And especially on the new buying side, I would be looking for some fresher things that not necessarily aren't showing a lot of power, but maybe didn't break out, you know, 15, 18, 20 weeks ago, maybe they just, maybe they're cyclical names that are just getting going and showing overwhelming strength. Overall, though, I do like the action. Again, I'm not a big breakout guy in the indexes, but the fact that we have 
not just like one index here or one part of the market over here, which has kind of happened a lot this year, hitting new highs, but kind of everything is rushing higher to new highs at this point. Obviously, a lot of stocks are joining in the party. And, you know, with the trend up, I think the odds favor that continuing. Okay, that's all the time I have for today. Thanks for watching. Be sure to come by again next week for another Cabot Weekly Review.